Well, good morning, and happy Friday, and welcome to Morning Gospel Fuel with Mr. G. It is Friday, October 22nd, the 29th Friday of Ordinary Time, and it is the feast day of Pope St. John Paul II, who is probably one of the most influential popes, or is the most influential pope of modern times, uh, we can recall. Uh, he was the Bishop of Rome from 1978 to 2005. And uh, if you don't know anything about Pope St. John Paul II, you should really get to know about him, whether you're a Catholic or not. His, between his, his upbringing, um, his parents, his siblings, his relationship with Poland in World War II, um, his influence in helping defeat communism, his impact on the youth, his sporting history with you know, with athletics, his outdoor adventures, just his devotion to to God, really. And uh, just an interesting fact, he, he learned 15 different languages, and he used nine of them, nine different languages regularly throughout his papacy. And, he, and just some other tidbit, um, he was a, uh, attempted assassination on his life in uh, 1981. Um, he forgave the attempted killer, in which um, his killer eventually converted to Catholicism in 2007. And uh, Pope John Paul II's motto for his papal, papal motto was totus tuus, which means totally yours. And he totally gave his life to the Lord um, and had a deep devotion to Mary. So to Tuus is often Mary and tied. He was beatified in 2011 and canonized a saint in 2014 after the two required miracles um, that were that took place and were approved by the Vatican. So very quick canonization process for him. So he's the patron saint of Poland, uh, the Archdiocese of Krakow, uh, as well as the patron saint of World Youth, of World Youth Day. So, a lot of good stuff. Today's gospel, as we continue through Luke chapter 12. Today's gospel is from Luke chapter 12, verses 54 through 59. Let's begin in the name of the Father, Son, and Spirit. Amen. He also said to the crowds, When you see a cloud rising in the west, you say immediately that it is going to rain. And so it does. And when you notice that the wind is blowing from the south, you say that it, you say that it is going to be hot. And so it is. You hypocrites, you know how to interpret the appearance of the earth and the sky. Why do you not know how to interpret the present time? Why do you not judge for yourselves what is right? If you are to go with your opponent before a magistrate, make an effort to settle the matter on the way. Otherwise, your opponent will turn you over to the judge, and the judge and the judge hand you over to the constable, and the constable throw you into prison. I say to you, you will not be released until you have paid the last penny. All right, let's see what the word among us has to do and has to say about this today. Why do you not know how to interpret the present time? Carpe diem, seize the day. In literature, film, even advertising, this well-known phrase exhorts as to hold, as to take hold of life with passion. Make the most of today, since tomorrow is not guaranteed. We often associate this saying with seeking pleasure or living selfishly. But for Christians, it can remind us to follow Jesus today, lest we miss the grace that God offers us. Jesus echoes this attitude in today's gospel as he concludes a heated conversation with a crowd that is gathered around him. He warns them to avoid the hypocrisy of the Pharisees, to prioritize the things that truly matter to God, and to ready themselves for the day of his return. Finally, he addresses their apparent inability to perceive what is happening right before their eyes. They could read the signs of the weather and react accordingly. Why couldn't they perceive the spiritual importance of the present time? Jesus himself was standing right in front of them. This was their opportunity to repent and accept him as the Messiah. Were they blind, or did they just prefer not to see? Perhaps they were a little bit of both. These people had followed Jesus and listened to his preaching, but they hadn't yet chosen to change their lives. Even Jesus' disciples were struggling with his call to sell your belongings and store up lasting treasure. 
Like them, we can struggle to take hold of God's call for our lives. St. Paul describes it in, a, in personal terms. I do not do the good I want, but I do the evil I do not want. Like the disciples and like Paul, we are ready to grab hold of the grace Jesus offers us at one moment, but we don't even notice him in the next. Even so, Jesus stands before us, just as he stood before the crowd, with grace for today. Wherever you are, today is your moment of visitation. Jesus says, I am with you. Let me help you. I have grace that will open your eyes, change your heart, and help you take the next step in following me. The time is now. Seize the day. Lord, help me to seize the grace you offer me today. Have a great day. God bless. And keep it real. Pope St. John Paul II, pray for us. In the name of the Father, Son, and Spirit, amen.